What's up with Fat Gang? It's your girl Mickey checking in, guys. And today, 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 we are still in our three, our third season of our celebration of the women in business. And I am super, super excited. We are starting off season three really strong, guys. And I am, I know, I'm just super excited about this season. Not saying I haven't been excited about my previous two, but I'm really excited about season three. So today we are joined with Miss Sade, who is the owner of Stump Down Kennels. And I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to her so she can tell you all about herself and her business. Okay, so as you introduced me already, my name is Sade. Um, born and raised here in Las Vegas, Nevada, so I am a native. Um, I have been in business now with my stump down kennel and breeding dogs for almost two and a half years. Um, my two, I guess, founder dogs, uh, Cuban, who is an exotic tri black bully and Griselda who is another she is more of a pocket size standard bully but she is chocolate tri um I have my first litter um April 16th so that was very exciting um I'm I've always been an avid dog lover I love all animals but dogs have always um pulled at my heartstrings a little bit uh, more than any other animal. So I jumped into the business knowing that it was predominantly men, but you know, nothing's wrong with switching stuff up a little bit. Um, I've been welcomed by other dog clubs. I enjoy what I do. Um, and so, yeah, that's just like a small introduction to myself. <laughs> okay. And so I guess we're going to just kind of jump right in. So you already said it's a predominantly male dominated industry. So what kind of like um, hurdles have you faced being in this business? Oh my goodness. I've, I've encountered a few hurdles um, where the first show that I went to, um, there was a gentleman and I was setting up my, my section that I had um, actually won off a, a drawing off of Instagram. And I was there and I was setting up and the guy comes up and he's like, okay, who are you with? And I'm like, I'm stumped down Kendall. He's like, where's your man at? And I'm like, no, 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 no. I am, I'm me. This is, hey. this is me right here. And he's like, hold on, wait, you don't got a man? I'm like, I didn't say I have a man. I said, this is me. I'm stumped okay. down. So, you know. <laughs> So those kind of hurdles, um, I've had people, you know, doubt what I was doing. Um, I feel like since it is a male dominated field, you see men, they're breeding. I feel like as a woman, we put a little bit more personal touch into it. Um, it was all about the face structure, the body structure. Um, yeah, the color was big to me, but I put two dark dogs together and people doubted my vision. They were like, you're doing two dark dogs, you're not going to get what you want. And guess what? My litter came out amazing. I had everywhere from um, a try um, pie to all of your try. I, I had a wonderful litter, a healthy litter, and I'm I'm thankful for following that vision, and I'm thankful for the people that actually encouraged the vision. Um, I had good friends that supported me and what I was doing to make me feel better about the decisions that I made. So big ups to the people that had me, you know, and put me in underneath their little arms and told me it was all right. So I, I had a few bumps, but I'm honestly happy with what has happened. Okay. I mean, and I am really, really happy that a pit bull lover. I grew up, I had a house all the time with pit bulls and things like that. And so to run into you and you actually like like those kind of dogs, because there are people who don't understand them, they so frown upon them. And once you understand the type of dog and you give them what they need and have them in the right environment with the right uh, trainer or home, <laughs> you know, they are very great dogs they can be yeah. they can be support dogs they can do a lot of different things so yes i i love that you are someone i personally know who is stepping into this male dominated industry because even when i was younger like my stepfather was into dogs and everything like that but it was always guys the woman was just like you know holding down some stuff or carrying stuff for the guy you know so when I met you and you were like, no, like, this is what I do. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so um, you mentioned you went to like some competition. So I know you probably can't give too many details about it, but 
So what kind of um, categories have you uh, competed in? So I actually, so my dad passed in September and it was my first um, show and I wasn't going to go just because he had just passed the day prior, but I know I made such a big deal to him about going to the show. So I was like, you know, I I sucked it up and I'm like, okay, I'm going to go out here for my dad. And I took the kids with me because my kids are a big part of some down, the big part of just the dogs period. And my, my children love dogs. So we went to the show and I was able to put uh, my boy Cuban, who is my stud. Um, I was able to add him to the best try and we went home with the trophy. So, you know, I felt like that was my way of my dad. Just like, I know he's seen that, you know, and I was like, that was a big thing for me. Um, and I even let my son, I didn't go out there to put him in the competition. I let my son who is now 14, but he was 13 at the time. I let him go out there. And I mean, he stacked the dog and they were like telling my son, like, good job. You know, we don't see that many youngsters out here doing it. But I make sure my kids from my logo, my sweaters, my masks, my kids repping, we, we stop down everywhere we go. So, you know, those are some of the competitions. Um, and as a, still being new to it and getting used to it, I go to a lot of shows and I observe. I'm, a, I'm an observer and I want to make sure that the content that I bring when I'm at a show, that it's effective and it's, it's you know, being brought the way that I want it to be perceived. So that's big to me. Right. And I, girl, I love how you, first of all, you had that courage to still go and do that competition. I know that was hard. Like you said, you came home with the win, so that kind of made it all worth it. And it was like a, a separate praise to your father, too. So, big. so I do give you kudos for that because I know that was tough. <laughs> it was a rough day, but I put my, you know, best face on. And I'm like, you know, I told my mom. My mom had my shirt on that day. And it was so big because I kept telling my dad, I need you there. I need you there. And even though we know his health was failing, he was like, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there. That's what he kept telling me. So the fact that he wasn't, you know, he passed the day before, it was just like, okay, I still got to go because this is what we last talked about. You know, I got to follow through on it. You got to follow through with the vision. So, yeah. girl, but I love how you incorporate your kids because as a business owner myself, it's all about teaching those, your kids to do the business, teaching them to be able to pass it down to them and they know the ins and outs of it already, really promoting and creating that generational wealth but also teaching them skills that they can take with them for like the rest of their lives. I mean, that's like marketing skills, that's promotion skills, that's communication skills, showmanship. Like, you know, it's a lot that is going into that. So I, how important was also creating a form of generational wealth was it for you with this business? Oh my goodness, that's something super big because now that I'm older and I, I will say my mother did her best, you know what I mean? She did her thing and I salute my mother every day. Um, but it, those conversations aren't had. You know, growing up, I didn't know, you know, you it's a lot of things I did not know that I, I can say that my children can wholeheartedly stand up and say, you know, my, my mama talked to me about that. My mama's telling me about that. Um, and, and that's a big thing because the credit, the generational wealth, home purchasing, that's something that was not discussed at any of my day, uh, the dinner tables, you know. So it's big to me now because I'm like, you know, I, dogs, people love animals. People are going to do, you know, people are going to have these things in their homes and some more than others. And I'm like, I know the quality of dog that I'm trying to bring. I know what I'm bringing forth to the table. So it's important for my kids to see, because not only just taking care of a dog, taking care of somebody else, that's, that's, that's giving, uh, that's not being selfish. You know what I mean? You've got to be able to take care, feed the dog, walk the dog, take care of it. It's already showing them at this age of how to prepare themselves, not only for their own life, but for children eventually, or even to take care of you down the line. You know, if you can treat the dog good, you're going know, to take care <laughs> it's really big, you know, and I talked to them because not only did I get into the dog uh, situation at the same time, I also got into the stock market at the same time, learning, and that was one thing that when I got online, my son had to be with me, like, hey, we're going to break this down, I want you to understand what I'm hearing, you may have a different understanding, so it's, generational wealth is just, it's so important, there's so many ways 
to approach it that we have to as African American, as mothers, as you know, we we're the backbone to to everything. You know, so I'm like, it's important that we share this with our kids. So eventually, somebody gonna hit that million mark. Somebody gonna hit it, and that's what I'm trying to bring it on to, right? Yes. And I, I, I definitely like how you touched on growing up. Those are not conversations we always have. When credit is mentioned, it's always like, oh, my credit jacked up or blah, 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 blah. But you don't have those conversations as, okay, how did it get jacked up? So we can try to fix that. You know, how to prevent it from getting jacked up in the first place, you know? So, <laughs> and like you said, those are conversations that now as adults, we're learning. So Correct. Okay, let me try to get myself together so that I can teach my kids so they're not starting from behind. Correct. You know. Correct. And that's the truth because generational wealth, it has to start by healing that trauma that we came from, that mind frame that we're not able to get that high paying job, the mind frame that we're not able to excel, you know, not in just academics, but not in just sports, but academically. Like we have to heal those past traumas and me just starting. I may not ever reach my mark. My goal is to reach my mark no matter what, right? But I'll, my goal is for my children to see mama try. So if mama try it, I'm going to try. Right. And if I, you know, you want to just take that instead of, I'm taking a foot, but I want my kids to take five more. So you got to start somewhere. That's true. And I'm not going to go, you know, uh, too far yeah. you know, here, but I mean, like you said, you really have to form that foundation that really teaching them. And when we grew up, just think, like you said, you, you have to teach yourself that you can get that job. Just think of growing up all the skills that like your mom or your dad or your uncle or auntie may have had, but they did not express it on a resume. There you go. All the things that they were doing, like all that tinkering with like the wiring and like the DVD or the the gaming system or the radio system, all of that. Like you can put all of that in a resume that shows you have a lot of different skills. You are doing electrical, um, electri electrical. There you go. There's the word. <laughs> um, you know what I'm saying? But it, like, just think a lot of people, we manage households. We do daily budgeting and everything like that. Those are all like good office skills. You can do accounting. You can say you have accounting skills. You can't go out here and say, you know, you're a skilled professional, but I have accounting skills. I have bookkeeping skills, you know? Yeah. Even, like, you know, you, I'm pretty sure you do some uh, marketing and everything like that on like social media. Yep. You're a, you have marketing skills. You have promotion skills. You have, yep, you have to. skills. You have graphic design skills. Like, this is all things that we didn't know growing up that our skills of ours, our talents, and we need to push and promote those. So it's like you said, it's all about breaking those curses and coming up out of that and teaching our kids how to really promote themselves, how to market themselves, and how to carry themselves. Correct. So the mind state that we have now do uh, appreciate that. And I love how you tapped into so many different um areas that we don't necessarily think about when we think of just opening a business or starting a business so before um i let you go it, would you like to tell everyone where they can find you if you have a current available um, puppies at this time or anything like that so I actually listen, I always tell everybody, even my keeper can go, okay? Listen, that's a part of generational wealth. You don't hold on to nothing, baby. Everything can go. Cause whatever God gave me the first time, he'd give it back to me again. Even better. So I always have a dog available, okay? Uh, dog is always ready to go. All of my dogs are um, American Bully Registered. Um, and also I can be found on Instagram at Stump Down Kennel, um, and also on Facebook as Griselda Gates, um, and Snapchat as well as Griselda Gates as well. Okay. And so, and that's how I also contact you about, um, purchasing a dog or anything like that. And you have your own male and female. You don't do 
My, I'm in house. I do in house breeding, um, and not knocking anyone that you know goes outside. A lot of breeders do, and that's fine. But for me, for right now, I believe so much in my vision that I'm doing my in house breeding at this time. Um, like I said, I I love love my litter that I produced this first time around. So I'm excited about the the turnaround. I'm excited about my new stud Kilo. Um, he's outside. I would have put him on camera because he's so cute. But um, I'm excited to just bring for what I think is an overall great family pet, you know, and that's important to me too. I will talk dog business with anybody, but as far as the dogs going home with anybody, that's another question. I need to make sure that the dogs are going to loving homes. That's super important to me because if you believe in your brand, you don't, you wouldn't just hand it over to anybody. So, you know, I want to make sure that the dogs I love for sure. Right, and then, like you said, it's, it's yes, there is a business aspect to it, but at the end of the day, you also you care for your your dogs. And yes, like, yes, they do this, and they are part of my business. They also come home to mommy at the end of the day. These are my babies, and I want to make sure they're taken care of. So I that's I it. Understand that. So I will make sure that all of Charday's information is in the description box down below. And I just want everyone to make sure you go and follow her on Instagram, follow her, add her on Facebook, guys. And just really, if you can't purchase, if she doesn't have any available right now, when you have your money together, don't come at her with no chump change. These are legit dogs. They're legit. Don't with no pennies, okay? Correct. But you, you don't get your money's worth for sure. I can guarantee you it. Yes. But... <laughs> I will make all her information in the description box. If you follow her, you'll see the love that she has for the dogs. They're not just part of her. Like, trust me, they all have. She loves them all. Okay, so if you like I said, if you follow her, you'll see the love and passion that she has not only for the business but for the dogs as a whole. So I again want to thank you so much for taking time to stop by the den. Thank you. I enjoyed myself. So, guys, make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. And until next time, I'll catch you guys later. Peace.